So I welcome you all in this presentation. My name is Sohil Ahmed. I'm a security researcher at Airtight Networks. <clears throat> I'm going to talk about autoimmunity disorder in wireless LANs. Uh, before that, I would like to have a polite request to hold your questions and queries for Q&A session. I'll ensure that this presentation would be full of fun and information. So many of you might be knowing about this autoimmunity. Uh, this is a quite popular terminology in medical science. This is a disease that exists in biological systems, say human bodies. In next couple of minutes, you will be witnessing how the current generation of wireless networks or so-called self-defending networks got infected from this disease. So I'm starting my presentation with simple comparison between biological systems and wireless LAN systems. So here is a biological system. There exists immune system. The purpose of immune system is to defend against attacks from viruses, germs, or foreign bodies. In the same way, in wireless LAN systems, the purpose of WLAN software or security software is to defend attacks against intruders or hackers. So here, the job of uh, immune system is to keep foreign bodies away from healthy bodies. The same way, the job of WLAN software is to keep unauthorized users or hackers away from authorized networks. When immune system mistakenly attacks and destroys healthy body cell or tissues, this condition is known as autoimmunity disorder. What we have discovered that similar condition also exists in wireless LANs, where access point mistakenly attacks and kills legitimate client connections. So I'll put few slides which will explain you or, or help you understand when and how the autoimmunity disorder occurs in wireless LAN systems. But before that, I'd like to introduce or uh, talk about a most quite popular attack in wireless LAN systems called denial of service attack. As we all know it's very easy to launch a denial of service attack. You just send the authentication or disassociation frame on behalf of client to access point or access point to client, and that's it. Connection breaks. So what's new here? The new thing that we want to, we would like to introduce here is called self-DOS. In self-DOS, attacker simply injects one stimulus in the network, and network launches DOS attack against its own authorized clients. This is called self-DOS. And these stimulus are nothing but a malformed packets which turns access point into connection killing device. So to understand self-DOS in a much better way, here is one example. Let's assume that a client is actually connected with access point and doing some data transfer. So when client sends a data packet to access point, it keeps its own identity in that packet in the source MAC address. Let's assume that attacker sends the data packet to access point without associating with that access point. What will happen? What will access point do? It will send a response message saying that you are not authorized to send data. Go away. And this message is nothing but a deauthentication notification frame. Now attacker is going to play a trick here. He is not going to put his own identity, but it, it puts a broadcast MAC address now what will happen? The message which was sent by access point earlier to attacker, now this message will destined to a broadcast address and will reach to all associated client. And as soon as a client receives this message, it finds that access point is saying that you are not authorized to send data packets, so go away. All associated clients immediately disconnect from that network. So in this example, what exactly happened? Attacker simply injected one packet and was able to kill all the connections. Same, same attack can also be launched using multicast MAC address. We tested this particular attack against these access points. What we found that D-Link, Buffalo, and open source smart Wi-Fi driver are actually vulnerable to this attack. So are you thinking that this attack is just because of some coding bug in present in the access point? The answer is yes. You are right. 
Due to some improper sanity check present in the access point, uh, we are able to trigger self-DOS kind of condition in these access points. So are we saying that all this self-DOS only depends on some bug present in access point software? The answer is no. Let's take an, uh, another example. The client associated with access point and doing data transfer. An attacker at that point injects one request packet spoofing the identity of client and keeping invalid attributes in that packet. When that packet is actually received by access point, <coughs> it finds that a client which was actually associated is sending a packet, fresh request packet with invalid attributes, attributes which does not match with attribute of network or access point. So access point send a response message saying that I'm going to tear down this association because the attributes are not matching on and the connection breaks. So in this example again, what exactly happened? A client, a connection was actually disconnected. Attacker simply injected one packet and able to break the connection. Now interesting question comes in our mind that why access point send such response message, why it breaks or deletes the existing connection. So if we see this response message, we'll find a special field called reason codes or a status codes present in these packets. Let's take a look of these reason codes. There are several reason codes or a status code mentioned in the standard. For example, let's say the reason code 21, it is saying that unsupported RSN information element per, element version or element capabilities. So access point software, actually if they are implementing these reason codes in a state machine or packet processing logic, they are, whenever it will receive an in, invalid RSN information element on behalf of a client, it is going to send a deauthentication packet to that client. And these, there are several reason codes mentioned. If you go through these reason codes or a status code, you'll be actually able to simulate those stim these stimulus packet very easily. You just go through these reason codes, see what they are saying, and just craft your packet accordingly. For example, I take example of status code here, 1818. It is saying that association denied due to requesting a station not supporting all of the data rates. So what you all have to do is just as request packet, keeping invalid rate set present in that packet. And that will be processed by the access points software. And it will send a response message with failure or sometimes it will send a deauthentication message. And actually this message will reach to a client because in the current implementation of access point software, WLAN device software, there is no logic implemented to actually differentiate between a spoof frame and a legitimate or genuine frame. So that's how you are going to inject stimulus in the network. And the beauty here is that there are several reason codes mentioned. There are several status codes mentioned in the standard. So you have several, so many packets which can actually trigger self-DOS in the network. And here is a new member of this family, .11w, latest standard has introduced one more reason code saying that robust management frame policy violation. So what you all have to do, just send a packet which violates the robust management policy of that network. And ne that network will send a deauthentication message with this particular reason code. If access point is actually implementing these reason codes in, in software. So it's a very easy to actually inject different stimuli in the network. When we tested this particular attributes based attacks against these access po point, what we found that all of these access point are actually vulnerable to self DOS. Now the question that came in our mind is, what's about Cisco MFP? Is Cisco MFP also vulnerable to self-DOS? Let's try to understand it. Here is a, one example in which MFP client is actually associated with MFP access point. And now attacker is going to send one SOC request packet and it is a genuine request packet no any attributes present in this packet is wrong or invalid. When access point receives a request packet, it finds that a client which was already associated is sending a fresh connection re establishment packet. 
So what should I do now? He has, either it can ignore that packet or honor that packet. Access point cannot ignore this packet because it is also possible that the client got reported and trying to establish a fresh connection. So it has to honor that packet. As soon as access point honors this packet, it deletes the old information, all old state information about the old connection. It deletes the key and it sends a response message to client. Client, which is not aware of the change in the state machine of access point, simply ignores the unsolicited response message and keeps on sending data packet. Access point, which is actually expecting a key establishment after seeing connection uh, request packet, sees that client is actually sending data, encrypted data packet. Access point has no key to actually decrypt that packet. It is expecting a fresh key establishment. So it sends a deauthentication message to client, which is unprotected message, because access point ha does not have this time any key to protect this deauthentication message. So it sends open deauthentication, which is actually ignored by MFP client. MFP client keeps on sending data. Access point keeps on sending deauthentication message to client, open deauthentication message. And actual communication between client and access point stops. And both client and access point have entered in a deadlock kind of environment situations. So if you notice the earlier DOS, you need to inject several packets to break the connections and keep a sustained disconnection between client and access point. MFP protocol was actually aiming to solve this DOS problem, actually ended with making the situation even worse. Now you need to send simple one packet and client and access point communication is actually broken. It cannot communicate further now. Not, let's take another example in which attacker is actually trying to victimize MFP client. So it sends a SOC response message with failure status code present in that. A client honors that message. It honors that message and tears down the association. So when it receives this message, it sends a protected deauthentication message to access point. Since this message is protected, it is actually honored by access point as well and it also deletes its state. So in this example, we have seen that actually in attacker was able to break MFP connections, uh, protected connections. So these problems that we have dis we are seeing here is not a new problem. Actually, uh, this was noticed when, when uh, people have implemented a higher level authentication in the protocol, uh, .11i, and even .11w uh, working group is aware of this, these kind of design level problems, and even the latest draft uh, contains one solution for this particular problem. But unfortunate stuff is that uh, even the standard is not ratified, vendors are packaging these stuff in a proprietary protocol, ignoring these design level is issues, and claiming a false security. That's not true. So here are the key points of this presentation. New avenues for launching DOS attacks are possible. Majority of these uh, vulnerabilities reported here are implementation dependent and found to exist in select open source access point or commercial access point software. Even with MFP or .11w, DOS vulnerabilities could not be completely eliminated. Even currently available MFP implementation also found vulnerable. So the time to demonstrate something. So I, I have a video demo here. Uh, a client uh, on left hand side, a packet analyzer, which is uh, showing data packet, a SOC request and the authentication packet. The auth packet will appear in a red color and a SOC request packet will appear in a green color. On the right hand side, black screen shows the client is actually send, doing ping traffic. Let's try to see if MFP works against deauthentication, open deauthentication, DOS attacks or not. So we send open deauthentication message and see what happens. So 
see re in red color the authentication message are coming up uh, and still ping traffic is going on so mfp is actually working now let's say send a sock request packet you can see in green color a sock request packet is coming up and the ping traffic stopped the access point client is still sending data packets on left hand side you can see client is still sending data packets because he is not aware of the change in the state machine of access point access point is sending the authentication packet which appears in a red color but actual communication is not happening the communication is broken so the claim that uh, mf cisco mfp is uh, the claim that people are making that it's not possible to launch dos attack it's not possible to have man in the middle attack or offline dictionary attack is not true so the bottom bottom line of this talk is that dos attacks are here to stay that's it that's all talks uh i have kept few uh, stimuli that can trigger self dos in wireless networks here in my presentation so if you are interested you can go through these stimuli and you can craft your own stimuli that can trigger self dos i have explained the logic thank you in case of mfp uh, uh for several seconds i mean it depends on upper layer if it takes some actions it detects that some packets are getting lost the communication is not taking place then it takes some action so we can say several seconds